Good morning everyone. It's lovely to be here with you on this spring day that feels like a summer's day. And I contemplated going outside and uh, doing this. And then I thought, I went out and thought, no, I'm not going to sit. It's not warm enough yet for me to sit outdoors without being cold. So I'm back in my study. But that's okay. We can worship wherever. It would be nice to have uh, heard all what was going around, listen to the wildlife, but not today. So I hope you're good today. Hope you're enjoying what the weather's throwing at us. And um, I wonder how Holy Week's going for you. I wonder how you're thinking, what you've, uh, what's come to mind, I wonder, for you. Has it been, there's usually something, isn't there, that, um, you see or think differently, something you've, from these familiar stories in the Bible that you read and think, oh, not seen that before, I've not thought about it like that before. So I wonder what that is for you today. Well, I can't quite read, oh, I think that says Barbara, so hello Barbara, good morning to you. It seems like we're arriving, so just to give anyone couple of minutes we're going to just get ourselves into a place and a mentally and physically where we're ready to worship where we're ready to commune with God excuse me to be in his presence to feel his presence in and around us so just where you are just get yourself comfortable and relaxed, feet on the floor, legs uncrossed, and just work from your toes all the way up your body, just intentionally relaxing those muscles. just going to concentrate on our breathing a minute so deep breaths in for a count of four then slowly blow that out so so if you remember our service that we're going to soon start we breathe in God's presence for the first part of the service and then we blow it out literally and symbolically as we meet people, as we pray for people, as we talk to other people, as we go about our everyday lives. We take God's presence there in us and with us as we take on the role of Christ's hands and feet. Lord, open our lips to bless you, and our mouths shall declare your praise. Blessed are you, gracious God. We will give you glory and praise forever. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This I call to mind and therefore I have hope. 
The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will put my hope in him. Now we come to that time where we're just going to spend a brief moment where we invite the God of hope into those hopeless situations we know of, be that people, places, communities, countries. So let's just spend a moment now inviting the God of hope in. Almighty God, in view of your great mercy, we lay our lives down as a morning sacrifice for you. Choosing to die to self, we ask you to pour your mighty resurrection power through us, that Jesus may be revealed and your kingdom come in power changing us and redeeming the world. Amen. So hopefully on the heading, oh sorry people, I should not tell I didn't sleep very well. <laughs> Excuse me for the yawning. As hopefully you saw on the um, heading, <coughs> we are reading today from Revelation chapter 3 verses 1 to 6. And to the angel of the assembly in Sardis write, He who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars says these things. I know your works, that you have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up and keep the things that remain which you were about to throw away. For I have found no works of yours perfected before my God. Remember therefore how you have received and heard. Keep it and repent. If therefore you won't watch, I will come as a thief. And you won't know what hour I will come upon you. Nevertheless, you have a few names in Sardis that did not defile their garments. They will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes will be arrayed in white garments and I will in no way blot his name out of the book of life. And I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the assemblies. So, although we're in Holy Week, I pondered it and thought, there's plenty of other opportunities for you to look at Holy Week readings and thoughts and reflections. So I decided to have our little, continue our break with Celtic saints. 
and today we're looking at someone called Gildas who died in 570 so 1500 years ago so he trained at Iltid's College along with David of Wales and Gildas could see that there was much wrong in the mainstream church so he became a hermit and moved to Somerset where he wrote his famous work oh, in Latin oh dear De Exidio Britanniae much of our historical knowledge of this time comes from this book Bede quoted it and took it as a primary source for his own writing the ecclesiastical history of the English people. Gildas book reflecting on the lamentations of Jeremiah chronicles the descent of the church in Britain from its original calling and mission to the mess it was during Gildas time in the sixth century. In his book Gildas says that the Christian faith was brought to the shores of Britain in the latter part of the reign of Tiberius Caesar who reigned between 14 and 37 AD. Assuming as most historians do that the changeover from BC to AD was slightly adrift from the actual birth of Christ this means that the Christian gospel reached Britain within 10 years of Jesus death which is quite possible as because of the trade routes that used to come through from the Middle East, so well, I think they started in China, came through the Middle East through Europe to here. Now, some people in the Holy Land had accepted Jesus, some had been converted during the missionary journeys of Paul. So it may well have been that these traders who stopped off at various places that had um, many Christian converts there you know, like Philippi, Ephesus and there they found the Christian faith and they heard all about it and were converted and brought that faith back to Britain and told of the story of Jesus So Gildas obviously didn't stay in his uh, hermitage in Somerset because it says he finished his days in Brittany, in what is today's Western France, where he was very well known and sought after for his knowledge and wisdom. He taught many people who came to him the stories of the church. So today's thoughts on that reading of Revelation and the notes about Gildas. Gildas the Wise, he's called. So, Gildas had seen the mess the church was in. The fact that the church had moved away from its roots, had moved away from its mission to live the mission of Jesus, as um, Winchester the Diocese would say, to love God, love our neighbour. So Gildas had wanted this authentic holy church, this holy life, and he presented his thoughts to the people. And he did this not simply just writing very negatively about, oh, this is wrong, that's wrong, etc. But he did it in a positive way, in that although he exposed the church's failings, he did it to sh and in a way that showed them how far they'd moved away from the church's original calling and how it could move back to being a holy and authentic place. So how does that affect us? What does that mean for us? Well, I'm guessing that you may be a bit like me and you've been despondent with the church at times. 
those times after the service finishes, when we uh, used to meet for tea and coffee, maybe even now on Zoom, in our home groups, on Twitter, etc, etc. Haven't you complained about the church? Haven't we been gossiping about it? Behind its back, as it were? Not just, and maybe not just your particular church, but the Church of England, the Anglican Church, whatever. What could we do in a more positive way? Because, yes, the church is not perfect, whatever church we're thinking of. Of course it's not, any more than we are. And it can't be because it is us, its body, made up of fallen humans. But how can we be you and me, how can we be more positive? How can we have a positive influence when we think that's not what the church is meant to be? That's not what our calling is. That's not what our mission is. We need to ponder on it. Think of it in a positive way. How can we get back to our calling, our mission? To love God, to love our neighbour, to love the earth. So there's my thoughts for today for you. I hope you dwell on and I hope I dwell on and remember the next time I'm thinking, oh no, that's not right. Instead of just being negative, to think, well, how, let's do... What about trying this instead? Let's have a positive attitude to change. So may we be like Gildas, seeing any wrong that takes place within our churches and taking a positive stand to make it right. May we not only gain knowledge, but also exercise wisdom May we know the power and peace that comes from walking in authentic holiness with God. So let's pray for wisdom and using it. So let's pray. Father God, we pray for all those refugees and internally displaced people. Think of the hundreds of thousands of Syrians who've had to flee because of the conflict. Who live in camps, who die in camps. We think of the hundreds of thousands who fleed Nigeria to escape the attacks from Boko Haram. Those in Cameroon, Burkina Faso and Mali who have been displaced from their homes by militants. We pray for those we've heard in the news recently, just this last couple of days in Mozambique. driven from their home by Islamist militants. Lord, we pray for their, you to protect them now. We pray that they will know peace where they have fled to, that they will find welcome arms pray that wise decisions will be made by leaders of this world as to how to help those who have to flee, the refugees, the displaced. 
Lord, open our hearts to be grateful that we live in a stable country. Open our hearts to show generosity in all forms to those who live in appalling circumstances, who have no home, who've lost family. Lord, we pray too for Myanmar and the horrendous attacks on the civilian population. We pray for those mourning their family and friends who've died while protesting. We pray that democratic leadership will be reinstated, that the army who are ruling and running this country will return to their proper place. We pray that the outside countries can exert influence, can offer help. We pray for the hearts of the army leaders. they will be turned. They will see the error of their ways and make wise decisions. We pray for peace in Myanmar. We pray for its citizens as they flee into Thailand to find safety in that country. And Father, we ask that they will be welcomed and looked after by the people of Thailand and the government there. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And Father, we pray and thank you for all that's been done in this country to bring about control of the virus. We thank you Lord for all those who have made, distribute, give the vaccine. We pray Lord for those who aren't taking the opportunity to have the vaccine. We pray Lord that they will hear the truth they will know that they've heard the truth and believe it in their hearts and choose to have the vaccine to be protected from the dangers of the virus. I pray Lord for all those countries who are struggling to get any vaccine. I pray that the Western world will have a generous heart and see the big picture, view the damping down of the virus as a holistic thing. That we are one world fighting this together. And Father, we particularly pray at this moment for Brazil. where the virus is rampant, where the government appears to be out of control as the military leaders step down today in protest of the leadership of that country. And Lord, we pray for the people in uh, Brazil pray for their protection, we pray for them to have strength to hold on and we pray that the leaders will be filled with wisdom, they will be filled with generosity and love for those they are supposed to be leading and helping and advising.
that they will have their care foremost in their minds and hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray that during Holy Week we might journey toward Easter with a hope that will enliven our communities with the presence of God. We pray, Lord, that you will give us opportunities to show and be your presence in our communities. Pray for our neighbours and those who work or just drive through our communities. We pray, Lord, that they will know the love and care of each other, that there will be a bond that our care for each other will be obvious through our actions and our words as we live out the mission of Jesus. Help us, Lord, to every day take the cover off our lamp so we can shine brightly in our communities. Give us courage and bravery to come out of the shadows and be the light you want us to be. Fill us with your spirit, Lord, as we go about our lives today so we can be your people. Speaking of your love and demonstrating that love to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Finally, Lord, we thank you that numbers of the virus are falling here and some of the restrictions are lifting. And we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to meet people face to face in our gardens. And we thank you, Lord, for this fantastic weather that makes this so pleasurable to sit in the spring sunshine, watch nature about us as we catch up with friends. But Lord, we pray that we will remain wise to the virus still being present, that we remain wise to still keeping our distance, still washing hands, still wearing masks where needed, and having plenty of fresh air. Lord, keep us all wise, keep our actions wise as we start to move out of restrictions and meet again. And as schools look to break up for the Easter holidays, we pray, Lord, for all the staff that they may be refreshed, refilled, revitalised over this break that they may use this opportunity to meet again with family and friends, to go out, to experience your world. So Lord, we ask for protection on them as they go about 
this Easter break. And we pray for the children who, having been back at school for a short period, are now holidaying again. We pray for this transition into holiday to be smooth, that they will enjoy this time with their loved ones, that they too will have the opportunity to meet up again with grandparents and other family and friends and gardens. I pray, Lord, that your Easter message will be known to them. That Easter is more than chocolate eggs. Help us, Lord, to pass on your message. Let us not be the generation where your message dies. Give us the words of wisdom and brave hearts to speak your words to others, to let you be known to the next generation. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So we finish our time of prayer by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O High King of Heaven, have mercy on our land. Revive your church. Send the Holy Spirit for the sake of the lost, the least and the broken. May your kingdom come to our nation. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Christ as a light, illumine and guide me. Christ as a shield, overshadow me. Christ under me. Christ over me, Christ beside me on my left and my right. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek yet all powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom I speak, in the mouth of each who speaks unto me. This day be within and without me lowly and meek yet all-powerful. Christ as a light, Christ as a shield, Christ beside me on my left and my right. So we finish this morning's prayers by saying the grace together. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you so much for joining this morning. It's been a pleasure as always. I'm sorry that I'm yawning so much. hope that hasn't distracted you. Have a good blessed day and uh, don't forget to ponder those questions about how you can positively change. Accept change, be that change. Take care and I will see you next week.